What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and happy holidays. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into a recent vacation that Key and I took during Thanksgiving. Uh, and I think I might do like a reoccurring thing every year where we end up shooting some film on a holiday. Um, and for this particular instance, I took out some Cine Steel 400D and we went out to a cabin up in Nesquero, Wisconsin. Uh, it was a fun time, um, nice little environment, but I took a bunch of photos on film using Cine Steel 400D because I told myself uh, it's new, right? And not only is it something to help me get used to using this film, but it was a good getaway from uh, automatically grabbing 800T or Portrait 800 from my fridge. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into some of the pictures that I took over this couple day vacation. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a thumbs up as well as click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content similar to this. Thank you guys and enjoy Thanksgiving on Cine Steel 400D. So after about two hours of driving and arguing over what song to actually play on the car's Bluetooth, we finally arrived to our cabin location. And one of the first uh, shots I took, I saw this blue shed in the area and I decided to take a shot of that just because I really like the teal colors that it produced. Uh, and overall, I mean, I like how the sky, I kind of got some details in the sky as well. The browns from the wiltered away uh, crop area is pretty, pretty prominent, right? I mentioned in previous videos that the browns render really nicely, the reds render really nicely. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of those colors in some of these upcoming pictures as well. Here is a shot of right across from our cabin area. So this was actually pretty cool. I really liked again. Uh, these fields and how the browns and everything had looked. The sky looks pretty beautiful. It was a nice, like, kind of sunny day, uh, thankfully, because it's always overcast when I decide to shoot film for some odd reason. It's a nice sunny day. The reds on the barn look really nice. A little silo that has that rustic, um, I was gonna say dirty gray, but kind of like that dull uh, color to it. Uh, and even the trees, you can kind of see some of the withered away, like leaves. You can see some greens on the trees as well. Uh, but the overall consensus, I like this photo a lot. Um, some animals deep in the background over there. There's a lot of cows out here, by the way. I also noticed too, and you guys will see as we dive a little bit deeper into these pictures, the Cine Steel 400D, uh, it gives you that old photo album, like nostalgic look to your images. I said the Cine Steel 50D gives you the best like cinematic look out of I think all three color films, but the 400D, the daylight balance dynamic film, I do feel that this gives you more of the look that you would get when you were looking at a photo album that maybe has faded away a little bit after some time. You have our bathroom shot here. Um, you know, I always want to take a photo of a bathroom with kind of like the cinematic lighting. Um, I do like the look of this image, uh, very small bathroom, by the way, we won't jump into much detail about that, but I do like the halation around the window, right? The lighting that's coming in, that aura um, red glow that you get with all your Cine Steel film. Uh, you know, I just like the picture overall, it just has that nice little haze in there. Uh, you can see the brown, copper bronze look within here as well. Uh, it, it just makes for a pretty cool picture, especially with that lighting seeping in the window throughout the day. So yeah, like a checkerboard and like a bunch of other props and stuff that's sitting around. I really like this area, how it's just lit up. There's nothing like super fancy about this photo at all, but I just like the the, the, the look of it, the feel. It kind of gives that whole cabin uh, outskirts vacation vibe. And I believe the next picture here is just a close up of the checkerboard with the bicycle cars, the little canoe and the cup. Again, it just gives me that like photo album look. Uh, the reds look great. Uh, you can see the blues are pretty good on there too. I like that. Uh, the blacks are a nice tone. Uh, the light that's shining in from like above uh, to the right side of the image helps really illuminate this shot. And I like this a lot. But we went and jumped outside here to explore the rest of the land. Uh, really wide backyard, extremely wide. Uh, and there's a lake on the actual um, land too, which was really cool. Sat out there a couple times uh, for to enjoy some of the scenery, but I do like this. This actually, to me, looks like it was shot a little bit with Cine Seal 50D. Again, they kind of all have a little bit of the same characteristics, uh, but I do enjoy this photo uh, for many reasons, because it just is a, just kind of a, a, a view of the land here, um, just from these two chairs that are up front plus with the chairs that are over on the right hand side. I wish, uh, again, coming here 
when it was bright and colorful, like during the summertime or during the fall. I definitely have to make my way back out here during that time just to kind of see um, how prominent and how like vibrant these colors are on uh, maybe 50D or something. Here is another shot of the house, a little bit more of a detailed shot of the house here, just the kind of top angle portion of it, also capturing a lot of like the moss that's on top of the roof with a lot of the dead leaves, as well as kind of like the uh, tree, the green tree that's incorporated at the top too. So a lot of, a lot of different colors in the photo here. Again, the reds look fantastic. Uh, I do again, just love how the reds render with Cine Seal 400D. Uh, it's a really good sign too, especially with a, for a daylight balance film. Uh, the browns again are prominent in the moss that's on the top of the roof here. Uh, but overall, yeah, I like this close-up shot. Just, uh, it kind of gives you more of a detailed shot of where we were at. All right, very interesting name. Uh, these were some kind of low light shots inside of the cabin. Very interesting name, like I mentioned, for a book. I'm assuming it is just pictures of cabins, but uh, I was afraid to open it, so we're just gonna move on. So moving on, this shot right here is probably one of my favorites. This one and the next one, uh, because I shot this directly out into the sun here. It encapsules the sky perfectly. Um, you can see the cloud, the, the cloud reflection into the water. The blues look really nice. You also get that nice halation glow um, over on like the pier dock on the other side too from the sunspot. Uh, I really think this is a dope shot. I personally would have maybe liked the trees to be a little bit more, um, the shadows not be like as deep on here, right? We lift the shadows a little bit to try to uh, bring some life back into the image, but overall, uh, I'll take what I can get. This is a beautiful photo uh, and I, I enjoy this one a lot here. So next up we have some photos of just us here. This one of Kia, you can see the halation on like her zipper section on her jacket. Uh, the sun is illuminating her pretty nicely. I like how the skin again, Cine Still 400D. And I will say this again, I mentioned it in one of my other videos. If you have not checked out my Cine Still guide, it's at the top here, check that out after this video. But 400D does a really good job of rendering the reds and the browns, like I mentioned. Uh, and it's really cool for uh, people with melanated skin, I feel. Um, it does a really good job of bringing that, that uh, brown pop out instead of it being kind of like that pale color that you see with a lot of times when shooting darker skin with film. Uh, but I do enjoy uh, 400D and what it does for melanated skin. And then jumping to our other photo here, another one just shot directly at the sun right so it's kind of that hazy look uh, from the sun just reflecting back into your camera uh, overall you know it, it, this does again it's not as bright as i may have wanted it to be i knew what i was going for when i shot against the sun same with the other shot here it's shot directly towards the sun so you know what type of image you're going to get it's like that hazy effect uh again this just screams old photo album like this other photo of me here uh kia took this one yeah you can't really see too much my like left side of my face is kind of etched out because of the sun and the positioning of the person during the light perfectly fine but again it just gives you that um, nostalgic look that I keep mentioning in your photos. Lastly, here's another shot. Um, I just wanted to add some perspective to the image. So I shot this through some of the um, twigs or wilted uh, plants in the area here. Same kind of shot as some of the other ones uh, from earlier. You have the sky that's nicely in focus. You have the sun radiating here on the left side. So you can kind of see those shadows have been lifted on those trees over there. It's still a little bit shadows are deeper on the other side, uh, but you also get that beautiful halation uh, glow on a lot of the pieces in here from the sun. So overall, I like this one too. Um, and that's most of the images that we took off of day one here. Uh, the next roll that we're gonna jump into I knew we were gonna go um, at night to do some shots, you know, play around with this jacuzzi outside. So I figured why not just jump in and see if we can rate this at a higher ISO. So I went ahead and rated the next roll that you guys are gonna see at 1600. And then I have my film lab, legacy film lab. Go ahead and check them out. Their information is in the description below. I had them push the film two stops and we want to just see what type of shots we get with that. I will point out too, we are eight months into shooting film and I am learning more each and every time and I also am learning that adding extra stops of light does not technically make your image brighter. It just helps you recover a lot of the shadow detail and whatnot within the image. 
Um, so I think a lot of people, including myself, that start off with film, you hear these push and pull, um, you know, terms, and you're thinking, okay, if I push this, a stopper, so if it's dark outside, then it's going to add more light to my image, which is completely false, because if you're shooting in a pitch black area that has no light, right, there's nothing for, there's nothing to be recovered, because you're just gonna need a, a dark image. So pushing an image in sense is being able to just recover some of the details within the shadows and the highlights. Um, and you have to still take the picture within a usable area. Otherwise, there's honestly no point of doing all that extra post-process work. Nothing super fancy, uh, just a picture of the map. I think my suitcase is in the area as well. So you can see again, some of the reds, a little bit out of focus, but still look really, really vibrant. Uh, the browns from the overall cabin uh, wood structure of the area. You see kind of the glow from the bathroom, from the light on the right-hand side. Um, in the sense of a detail shot, it's cool. And we can just move on to the next one, nothing fancy. Um, this is a shot at night of the jacuzzi before we all hopped in here. Uh, had some cool LED lights. Again, when you're shooting, you know, at night, we wanna make sure you find the lights. There's some nice fairy lights that were listed out here too that I turned on uh, just to get some extra lighting on the image. Cause again, when you are pushing this, Film. And if I shot this directly at night without any of those extra lights on, or even if I turned off the LEDs inside of the jacuzzi, um, this was just gonna be a completely unusable image. So like it was brought back a little bit, but there's not really much you can do when you're shooting in a complete dark area. All right, here's a picture of Kia within the jacuzzi here. We have the nice halation on the string lights that I mentioned as well. Um, again, the browns look pretty cool too. It's a little, again, of course she's dark. It's night outside and there wasn't a lot of sufficient light, but you can see the purple LED um, RGB lights inside of here. You know, you can see the brown on her skin. Um, so enough of her is in focus um, and a little bit of light in the picture to be able to see, which is cool. So we can move on from that one. Inside, like I said, they had a Sega, they had like an NES. Um, we had Super Mario Bros. game, Super Mario Bros. 3, one of the best Mario Brothers games that are out there. Um, we played some of this, this was a fun time. Uh, but being able to capture this on film, just of the screen, um, this was a, a cool shot, I feel. Definitely something that'll live in an album um, for memory purposes. So this is a shot of the lamp and the lampshade. I wish there would have been a ladybug crawling in there because there were quite a few during our stay. Uh, playing around inside of the light source. But uh, this is cool, I like the glow. You get the halation glow that you get with your cine still film. Um, the shadows in the back of this are, you know, it's dark, so of course we're not gonna be able to see too much of that. But I just, I like the feel to this image because you have that nice bronze, like copper feel on the wood here that's illuminated by the light. So it's just a nice little detail shot. Here's a picture of these nice little maps that they have on the wall here. Um, just highlighting, I guess, some old time Wisconsin stuff here. Uh, if I haven't mentioned earlier, when rating this at 1600 and then having it push two stops by your film lab, the grain obviously is a lot more prominent because the higher the ISO of the film, or even with digital, the higher the ISO you go, the more grain and noise that will be prominent in your images and video. So um, as you can see, the grain is kind of present in this uh, image, but I do, I think it adds another dynamic. Again, it gives that warm, nostalgic feel um, in this in this photo that you could just store in a photo album. Oh, okay, okay. This photo right here, I do enjoy this one because again, you have that you have that light seeping in right from these little cloth blinds, these paper blinds. You have the you can if you can look a little bit deeper into the image behind the paper blinds, you can see the like the red halation inside of the window seal. Uh, but also my favorite part, the little fireplace furnace over here in the corner, look at the reds. Like you can see kind of the, 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 um, the deeps of the reds here. You can see the reflection like rays from the blinds hitting that area too. And again, the grain adds another dynamic to the image. I overall like this, just the, the color scheme of this photo uh, and the positioning, I like this a lot. Uh, maybe I would have turned on the makeshift fireplace just to add another dynamic to the shot, but I, I do like it how it is. It's just, again, as you look at a photo and tend to critique it, uh, sometimes you just have to accept it for what it is. All right, so the next set of images here, I didn't take many throughout the day just because we were using that as just a rest or relaxation period, and I didn't want to think about cameras or anything, right? So uh, the couple shots I did take during 
the first part of the day. Just kind of a side detail shot here of outside in the other section of the cabin. You have the greens and the little timer, uh, the greens from the plants, the browns are looking pretty nice and healthy from the window seal here. Uh, just a, again, a detail shot, like just peeking around the corner uh, ledge here. And you know, I thought that was pretty cool. I include that in the video. We have some uh, drinks here, got some Mike's Hard uh, Black Cherry, actually a really, really decent flavor. If anyone drinks Mike's Hard, um, you know, alcoholic lemonade beverages, then this one's pretty, this one's pretty dope to try. I was very surprised at the uh, color uh, flavor behind that, but I wish I would have straightened my camera out a little bit more. I don't know what type of angle I was going for for this. Uh, but yes, I love the reds again and then the, of course, the, the glow coming in on the smaller or the lower parts of the bottle. And then just mainly the positioning of the bottle next to the light. I knew that the light source from the window behind it was going to illuminate the bottle and kind of just give that red glow that you get with just shooting like against um, light sources and whatnot. So um, cool image again. I wish I would have straightened my camera out a little bit more and put some more uh, negative space on the left side so it'll be a bit more even. Another shot of the cabin outside from the extra garage spot plus the actual cabin itself. Uh, during this time, we were leaving to go and get some shots of the sunset because I told myself um, I need to capture a lot of this stuff when I'm out in the country because you might not have uh, more opportunities to do that. Everything in the city is so uh, polluted and overpopulated. You're not able to see like a lot of awesome scenic type areas where compared to when you travel farther out north in Wisconsin, there's a ton of stuff out there between the animals and the beautiful just scenery. Uh, it's less uh, less polluted, it's less touched by humans, so it's more, uh, it makes for better photographs. So we're jumping into some sunset shots here. I do like this image right here. There's a lot of birds that are just out here freely flying around. You have the light poles in the back. Um, the nice sun reflection hitting the grass here uh, on top of this hill. Um, I do like this a lot. I really appreciate the sky, the blues from the sky right here. You tell from the sun setting going into blue hour. Um, I, I like this shot a lot here. We jump into this one, kind of the same concept, but again, the shadows are super deep on these images. Uh, with the trees, you can barely see anything but the sun setting in the background. And then you have a couple of the birds that are again flying freely, some more clouds. Um, I just like the deep sunset feel of the image. The shadow is a little bit too dark for my liking, but I thought I'd just include it just because. Uh, but again, I think it's okay. Here's one where the greens, you're still kind of getting some of the green feels on the grass here. Um, the shadows and the trees in the background aren't as dark as you know some of uh, the last image. And then you also still get the colors from the sun setting and then the sky here. So this one's a pretty decent image too. I like this one a lot. This isn't anything special. It's just me taking a picture in the middle of the road. Uh, you see the halation from the car lights of the car that's coming up above. Uh, you still get some detail with the sky, so nothing super fancy. But uh, yeah, I have my road picture. <laughs> we go forward again. We have another uh, scenery again. You can see still some of the details from the grass in front and then the deeper into the picture you go closer to the sunset you do see the shadows are a little bit more darker um, but the sun is kind of setting all the way at this point here going off into the horizon next shot here i love i love love this picture uh, for many many reasons one i captured the moon in this image all i did was point this up to the sky uh, you still get like the nice orange red colors from the sun inside of the clouds here uh, there's so much going on in this picture where it doesn't look like there's a lot going on the blues you can tell they're starting to become a little more prominent because we're heading into blue hour now that the sun is going down uh, this picture screams nostalgic to me uh, and I just personally like this is one of my favorite pictures from the trip because I just literally pointed my camera up to the sky and snapped the photo um, and this is really nice just you guys let me know in the comments what you think of the moon picture that's what we'll label it as the moon picture another moon picture all right I have the garbage cans believe it or not I thought the garbage cans outside of the cabin would actually add another perspective to the image so I try my damnedest to back up as far as possible but not be too far away with the 50 millimeter lens uh, and yeah you get the you get the nice reddish browns inside of the plants here you got some green out the out the grass section as well 
the kind of withered away trees in the back. You actually have a lot of detail within the sky. And then of course the moon too, again, being super prominent. You even see, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you guys can see like that halo shine around the moon uh, too from the Cine Seal film. So again, uh, another moon photo. I like the other one a lot more than this one, but uh, this kind of frames out the outside portion of the cabin. After all of those shenanigans, it took us into the next day, which is time to go back home and get back to our real lives here. And we're going to jump into some last photos of our drive back to Milwaukee. We drove past a lot of like torn down barns and different buildings within the area. Um, I was just going to go out and take a couple shots as we drive by, park and then get out and take some images. I am not as adventurous as some of the other uh, YouTubers that are out there that will probably go inside the cabin and explore and do X, Y, and Z. I'm not about to get haunted or anything like that. So I'm just going to stand as far as way and take the photo. And here's a kind of a um, torn down barn here out north. Uh, there's a red uh, dump truck, it looks like in the background as well. So again, the reds look really nice. Now this was an overcast day completely. Um, I think it had rained the night prior to us uh, leaving the following morning. So um, as you can tell, it's super foggy outside and I still think some of these images are gonna be pretty dope. So yes, here's this one. Jump into our next one. We saw all this yellow plane on the way back and decided to pull over and take an image of that. I tried to get as close as possible without looking like I was trying to hijack their plane. I feel that if this photo was taken with Kodak Gold, that the yellows on here would be a lot more punchy and vibrant. But since we're shooting with Cine Steel 400D and then highlights a lot of the browns and whatnot, I feel this leans towards the bottom portion of that yellow scale where the copper um, and like lower tier gold colors. Either way, the yellow on here looks fantastic. I'm just guess I'm trying to map out on the color spectrum of where that would fall. We have some cows, okay? We got some cows and this is probably as nostalgic as it gets. Um, I tried to get as close as possible. These guys started looking at me. Uh, these were nice. You could see the fog and the cloudy overcast in the background, but like the cows that are right up here, the browns from the cows look fantastic. The reds in the background from the barns look really nice. You have uh, the silos, uh, the nice greens here that are rendering. Uh, overall, I like this picture because uh, it just gives you that sense of farm life. One day, one day I'm going to buy a farm and just go off and disappear off the grid and just live my life with just farming because uh, it seems a lot more simpler than a lot of the things that happen nowadays. So a couple of the shots here, uh, I wanted to get my wife more incorporated with film cameras, right? So I gave her the Nikon F3 and like, hey, take a picture of this house here. Uh, so this one right here is a Kia specialty. Uh, I do like the composition from this photo here, especially it's just straight at eye level. Um, you can see again, the colors from the grass and the greenery on the section here. I like how the, uh, what I, how do I mention this? I'm gonna say like moldy yellow or maybe olive, right? Of the color of the house here. It looks just torn down and uh, deprecated. I like that uh, the rust on top of the roof. Uh, it, it's an interesting image. I'm glad it came out really well. So shout out to her. Um, I'm glad it came out um, and focused and everything because um, these old, just like torn down houses, just give you a different vibe uh, in terms of like that nostalgic feeling, I guess. Oh yes, this one right here. So another torn down barn. Now I probably, if I really wanted to, I could have went inside of here and really did some exploring and uh, see what type of shots I can get. But again, uh, we're going to keep our distance from things we don't know or understand. Uh, but yes, we have a torn down barn here next to a silo. Um, about as simple as you can get with this image. I mean, it's it's there. Uh, the roof is a little bit uh, torn off towards the backside. Uh, the, the doors are completely busted out. There's some windows in the back on the left hand side next to the silo that are just gone. Um, it's just an old looking image like this barn and went through a few things, right? Coming to the end of our photos here, we have some ponies and horses. Uh, really just love the coloring of the horses, just that um, aura cine seal glow that comes off of the white and brown one right here. Uh, I do like how everything color wise rendered in this image. I wish, again, this is why I wish I would have brought my 105 so I can get some closer, more detailed shots of the animals. But again, vacation, take what we can get. And that is all that we have on our docket here. Uh, of course, not all the photos from every single roll came out, you know, looking pristine and nice. So I selected the best ones here. 
that we could use and advertise for this video. So you guys let me know in the comments what you thought of the photo, what you thought of the commentary, and just the uh, overall you know vibe of the video. If you prefer me to do a little bit more play-by-play -play of some of the images that I take, uh, I could definitely look into doing more of that as we come upon the new year. But thank you again for watching. I appreciate you. Make sure you leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, as well as click that subscribe button if you haven't yet to become a channel member. But if you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for supporting me up until this point and for your continued support in the future. You are greatly, greatly appreciated. And I can't wait to make more content that we all can enjoy. Thank you all again. and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy holidays.